Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cine Cool, and this is EverQuest Project 1999. And today we are on the green server, on the level 21 Enchanter. Um, in this video we're going to be going over the Treasure Hunting Guide for levels uh, 20 to 24-ish. Um, or you might call it the Platinum Making Guide for low... Low-level players, 20s, early 20s, or the ultimate leveling while making money guide. I'm going to be going over that kind of stuff on this video. In the background here, you're watching us attempt to do Mistmore. Um, just zoned out. Uh, we, this is our first time ever being in Mistmore. We're trying the entrance. In my last video, I went over the hunting spots, like the per-level hunting guide, for levels uh, 20 to 24. And Mistmore Entrance was mentioned on that hunting guide for level 21. I'm 21. Trey's 21. We're duoing. We're at the entrance to Mistmore. I feel like it's we need to be level 22, level 23 before we can actually handle it. The guide does say you can solo it at 21, which I don't know. I don't know. There was another enchanter there, like, taking some of the spawns. Maybe if we had access to the whole ENT and all the mobs, maybe we could have made something out of it. Or if we had, like, one more person, like a trio or a full group, we could have definitely made something out of it. But as a solo going in there at 21, I don't know. Even the enchanter who was sitting in there, Dolores right there, who was like a, you know, I don't know. They were okay. It wasn't my favorite person ever, but... Wasn't too abrasive either. Kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, the, even they said they didn't start doing this till level 22. So the guide might be a little bit off. It says 21. I think it, it's more like a 22 or 23. Because we did have a lot of trouble, even as a duo. Two 21s, a ranger and an enchanter. Um, we had a little bit of trouble. We didn't. Uh, you'll see, you'll see. Just watch the footage. It's kind of uh, exciting while we go over this uh, plat guide. The ultimate leveling while making money guide. The, uh, the Platinum Making Guide for Low or New Players, slash uh, the Treasure Hunting Guide. So I'm going to do the level 20s to 24, because that's what we did for the, the Hunting Guide, and that's what level I am. We'll go back and cover the other levels at some point, probably, because the last video did okay, and I think this is a, you know, we can continue to do this for levels 1 to 12 or something, levels, whatever. We'll do it for the other levels, too, basically. But let's do 20 to 24 because that's what I am, and that's what we did for the per-level hunting guide. So now we're going to do the making plat while leveling guide. All right, so basically the main goal here is going to be to make some plat while you're getting experience. Um, and we're going to look at the uh, same place as we looked last time. Um, ultimate leveling while making money guide. All right, we got levels 18 to 24, so it's a little bit different, but kind of the same. Crag Spiders and Eastern Karana. So I think this was on the per-level hunting guide, too. But we maybe will get some more information here. And once again, this is for me to get some ideas for myself. Hopefully you can get some ideas, too. We're just going over it. Crag Spiders and Eastern Karana, right by the long, wind winding entrance back into High Pass Hold. Rarely camped by more than two people, and even then, there were so many spiders and other wandering dark blue con mobs. You have more than enough before your mana HP can regen. The coin off these isn't that great, but they drop a ton of spider silk, which you can sell to other players for a good amount of plat, as you will have well over 20 plus stacks by the time these con light blue. If you happen to be a necro, Toll Nice Lot in the Arudin Library is an excellent solo camp for levels 20 to 24. Um, you will want to use Fear and kill him as soon as possible because he uses Lay on Hands, but he is worth a nice chunk of experience, has a 5 minute spawn, and averages over 5 platinum per drop. So that's Toll Nice a lot in the Arudin Library, if you happen to be a Necro. Five platinum per drop. Uh, during Kunark era, level 20, most classes are able to contend with the lower tier giants in Warslick's Woods. You can most certainly join an XP group at 19, however. The money is not super steady, but there are a few drops worth mentioning. Pieces of armor, weapons, as well as the elusive forest loop, you could, if you feel so inclined, you could stay at this camp until level 30. So the Kunark Giants and Warsick Woods. That being said, I would recommend checking out the Brutes outside of Dawnir. Once you hit level 25 or 26, it's one of the easiest money camps I've ever seen. Though it is highly contested, so be prepared to sit on a list. There are two camps of Brutes, a 2-spawn and a 3-spawn. Though they con Skulling ready to attack, 
Scalding ready to attack, they will not aggro you unless attacked. Unbelievably, they will not even aggro as you attack their friends. No social aggro. 90% of the time, they drop low mid-grade gems, which will sell to merchants for 5 gold to 8 plat. Being that gems are so lightweight, you can stack these forever, even forego looting the jewelry, which doesn't stack. I believe I stayed at this camp until level 37, though the XP had slowed down drastically at 35+. plus. The money was so good, I did not want to leave. I've been there, done that. That is a good camp. That's where I had that uh, dude walk up and say he'd been there for hours when he when I was there for hours, and I knew he was lying, and I made a whole video out of it. It says, edit as a necro, soloing Toll nice a lot. You'll want to pull him downstairs through the teleporter as if you were exiting the city and kill him there to avoid getting killed by the Palatin Guild Master that will aggro if he paths near her, as well as the Enchanter GM at the end during the night. I've died a couple of times to these two until I wisened up to this strategy. Good hunting fellow Neckers and stay evil. PS made all the way to 26 on the Toll Nice a lot until EXP slowed down. So that was levels uh, 18 to 24. Uh, Crag Spiders and Eastern Karana by High Pass Hold. Uh, that one was also in the per level hunting guide, um, selling the silk to other players, I guess. Um, Toll Nice a lot in a Rudin Library. Five plat a drop every time you kill them. Um. The Giants and Warslick's Woods, um, Forest Loop, decent decent drops there. Um, the Brutes outside of Dalnir, once you hit 25 or 26, it's a little bit later on in this range. But uh, yeah, the Brutes, definitely good. They drop gems, the gems sell good. And then, uh, yeah, they went on to talk about Toll Nice a lot again. Uh, we do have a 22 to 28, which does kind of cover between 20 and 24, so... I guess I'll go over this one, too. Um, levels 22 to 28. Haunted Island in Ocean of Tears. Eight total spawns of gargoyles, which drop gargoyle eyes. These vendor for 190 plat per stack. It's another one. It's kind of the Venn diagram. It's in both of them. The gargoyles in OOT. That's where I'm planning to go. Um, after trying Mistmore ENT, which I think is more for level 22, 23, 24, not 21. Um... I feel like the Gargoyles is the place to be. They're level 19, so they won't be... Like, when I went into Mistmore, you will see here, I'm conning them, we're trying them. Um, you're you're going to see how much trouble we have and what they con and everything. They were conning white and yellow. And there were some reds right there, too. There's like a Gargoyle that was a red. There was definitely yellows, and there was for sure whites. And, um, you know, if I had a full group, we could take that, and that'd be awesome. But it was just the two of us, level 21... And it was a little bit too hard. If they were all blue, we could have done it. Maybe even took a white. If I had a blue pet and we were right by the zone and there wasn't anything else going on, maybe we could beat an even. But why? You shouldn't have to like try to do that. So I don't feel like Miss Moore's good until you're at least 22, 23, in my opinion. Um, but levels 22 to 28. Haunted Island and Ocean of Tears, eight total spawns of gargoyles which drop gargoyle eyes. They vendor for 190 plat per stack. Sometimes they will drop two at a time, but overall, I'd say that roughly 30% of your gargoyle kills will net you an eye. I took my wood elf ranger to the island immediately after getting a level buffer at 22 and hunted for approximately 24 hours in a two-day period. Starting at level 22, the gargoyles were giving roughly 2-3% to of a level per kill. At 27, each kill was still approximately 1-2% to of a level, even though gargoyles turned dark green. The main thing that slows down experience and loot is how the island works with PH spawns. Skeleton spawns are more frequent. At level 22, a few skeletons were giving negligible EXP. At 23, no skeletons were providing experience. Their loot is exactly like that of decaying skeletons in newbie zones. Cloth armor, bone chips, rusty weapons, and the occasional cracked staff. Sounds good for 21, though. The gargoyles are 19. You get experience from the skeletons, too. Skeletons and gargoyles have some kind of beef with one another, and as you'll occasionally see them in combat together, skeletons are no match for the gargoyles. At this point on the video, we were talking about maybe trying to fight out here in, in Fey, but there was just all greens on his tracking, so we, that ended up being a bust. This whole video was a bust. We were trying to, I was trying to get y'all a Mistmore video. We ran all the way from freaking... Uh, Dagner's Cauldron um, without so. We ran all the way from Dagner's Cauldron without, like pretty much all the way from Unrest without so. And then by the time we got here, we only had like an hour left to play because I got on on like 15 minutes late too. 
and like we did some other stuff real quick and then we started running so by the time we got here we only had like an hour left and then there was the enchanter sitting there like taking the front stuff and like the the easy blues and then like when we started trying to fight we got a couple kills but it was like really hard and we kept having having to run out like it was a whole ordeal and by the time we figured out that this was not the place to be for us we only had like 45 minutes to like 30 to 45 minutes left so we would have had to have ran all the way somewhere else, like at least Dagner's Cauldron, OOT, somewhere like that. And it would have took like the amount of time we had left to play, which so it was like a total bust this day on video there. Um, skeletons and gargoyles have some kind of beef with one another, as you'll occasionally see them in combat together. Skeletons are no match for the gargoyles, even when they gang up on them. However, this needs to be of note because it's possible to get uh, KS'd by a skeleton if you're not careful. Due to the hilly and gray toned nature of the island, both skeletons and gargoyles are camouflaged by the background day or night, making them difficult to see and easily allowing you to get jumped. Because their paths cross often, you might end up in combat with one or two foes at a time. Again, this is a potential source for getting a gargoyle cast by a skelly or getting jumped and having to deal with more mobs. If the island hasn't been cleared any time recently, it's highly likely that the entire eight spawns will have been replaced with all gargoyles. This is an ideal but semi-dangerous situation. If you just started hunting the island and don't know what you're doing, you'll easily get overwhelmed by two or three gargoyles, and you'll have no, you'll have, you'll have little recourse for escape. If you don't have feign death or gate, you're going to die. Where are you going to swim to quickly enough to get help? That's the one thing I'm worried about, man. Like getting two or three of them at a time and like being stuck on an island and probably not bound anywhere close by i don't know i might like at least ride a boat back even if i gate or die when you first that's why i was trying to do miss more entrance first you know i wasn't trying to go all the way to an island first when you first arrive you'll likely be coming from directly northwest or northeast of the island via the boat head to the east northeast corner of the island as there is a peninsula jutting out that points toward the nearby goblin island it's got a small tree up on its little hill and this is a safe spot to camp med heal or go afk as there are no paths near enough to aggro you the water line will become your friend during this endeavor as you should be pulling to the water each and every kill for the foreseeable future this is until you have the island well and clear of mobs using whatever keyboard key you've uh, bound to alternate between npcs this is valuable even as a tracker i use tab acquire a target and then visually find it before entering combat it's best to pull with range and run immediately to the nearest water line so you can fight nuke them into oblivion the vast majority of the time you'll get a single pool but during the initial stages of your camp when it's populated you'll get a higher likelihood of pulling more than one so keep that in mind and keep your eyes open sorry we're like just sitting here um i think we go back in the water line will become your friend during this endeavor. Um, oops. Pet classes take note. Pull with a spell. Don't send your pet in during the initial clearing stages that will, as it will drastically increase your potential for ads. Tab often. Be wary of four specters also on the island. And if you're facing them, they're going to end up targeting on occasion, which is just super annoying. Oh, and don't get too close to them because they're around level 35 and can hit for 90 plus damage. You aggro them, you're going to die because you'll get a group of three or four. With all that in mind, some data. Six verified spawn points, yada yada. Um, the other two spawns could not be verified. You can make this a semi-AFK camp or an active one. It's up to you. And starting out, it's likely going to be very active because you're just... High enough to handle one to two gargoyles at a time with a long break in between. As skeletons replace the gargoyles, the speed in which you clear the island will increase. Says pro tip, always, always, always keep at least one, ideally two gargoyles alive during your stay on the island. Again, they fight off the skeletons who are just a, frankly, a waste of your time. The only major benefit of the skellies is bone chips. Um... After my two days of hunting, uh, I left with just over nine stacks of eyes, 11 stacks of bone chips, and five levels. I could have easily stayed to acquire another level, but I got impatient and wanted to move on. Nevertheless, it's still a viable hunting spot to get to 28, even 29, if a, be if a bit tedious. Hello, this is EverQuest Tedium Incarnate. Yep, that's what I'm always saying. Um, Levels 24 to 28, that's a little bit too far. So that's all they had for 22 to 28 was the uh gargoyles but hey that's a few camps uh for you for the plat farming let's see if i can find you a couple more while we uh watch the rest of this video potentially um
All right, I think I found it. Pause the video for a sec. Right in the middle of a fight. Um, coin trash item camps to be sold to vendors. So these are camps that you will... The items that you get will be sold to vendors. And we have... All right, level 21, Lake Wrath tier, near South Karana Zone Line. Assorted gnolls for the day and undead at night. Bronze weapons and small armor. It says bind in the arena. That's all it says, but I mean, hey, that's another place for you. Uh, Lake Wrath tier, near South Karana Zone Line. Assorted gnolls and undead. Bronze weapons and small armor to sell to vendors. Um, for level 20, Ocean of Tears, Gargoyle Island. Gargoyles, Gargoyle Eyes. Gargoyle Eyes stack and sell to vendors in zone for 180 plat per stack. Um, Southern Karana at level 20. A Hermit. Fine Steel Dagger, Fine Steel Great Staff, ETC. Vendors in zone at Aviac and Centaur Villages. So in Southern Karana, a Hermit. Uh, and that's about it for 20 to 24. Everything else is higher level than that. But hey, there's some more for you. Let's see if I can find something else. Um. Making money while hunting guide. Alright, we got 18 to 28. Uh, for the levels 18 to 28-ish, and slightly higher if you choose... We are going to pain eel. This is very dependent on whether the guards like you or not. I don't know what race, class, deity it takes to be at least dubiously here, but ideally you want apprehensively. If you are dubiously uh, here, but if you are dubiously, this will work if you have some form of faction song, spell, enchanter, uh, or if you have sneak. Uh, here we have a bunch of undead guards. They start out at about level 15, I believe, and go upwards towards level 25-ish. Or maybe 27, 28. When you kill the guards here, they give zero faction hits towards good or bad. It's like killing a rat. It doesn't matter, they'll still love you. <laughs> when you kill them, they drop a bronze bastard sword, which vendors for 2.5 plat, and kite shield, which vendors for 3.5 plat. They say they may have those off just a little bit. The best part is, if the town likes you, like I previously said, you can kill level off the guards and vendor their sword shields to the merchants, then go right around the corner and back and bank the plant. I did this on my druid back when P99 released. I think I stayed till 34 when I got Drones of Doom. To get in the city, I believe you'll need to be amiably. You can go to the guards and say, give me the keys to get the keys to go down the elevator. If you don't have enough high... If you don't have high enough faction to get the keys but are above scow threateningly and choose to do this, just have a pal make a level 1 and get you in the city. It'll suck if you die because you'll have to have him make a level 1 again and take you... Have him make a level 1 again to let you in to corpse retrieve, but just scope out the city. You'll find your save points to pull to. This person doesn't... Sorry, they're not writing very good while well, I'm not reading very good. It's like a combo. This is classic. Guards start giving negative faction in Lukelin and is intended to stay this way. It says, I continued to level here until 37 on a monk and could have went higher as the palace guards were conning white, dark blue. Could easily take you into your 40s if you had the patience. It's a highly contested camp. I'll put this in two times because I don't think we have too much time left. I don't have too many more camps for you. And um, I want you to see the rest of it, I guess. Says 20-ish. Level 20 camp, a frog luck gas squire. Level 17, he rarely drops ruined bone fork. A 10 MR fire cold range for melees minus paladin monk. I've seen this go anywhere from 300 to 1k. I think 500 to 700 is a fair price. I don't think so. Not anymore. Right? Ruined bone fork? I think that's way less nowadays. But hey. Says 20 plus. Level 20 plus camp, I suggest... 35 plus to make it efficient is instant invis versus animal ring. Goblin Gazugi ring is wanted by all enchanters bards. It allows you to instantly break charm. It drops off a mob in Lake of Ill Omen called a Sarnak Courier. This is a partial guide on the following link I provided to camping it. I know from experience that this mob has about 
seven to eight spawn points, all of which the spawn points... 47 seconds. This guy... The ring it drops can be incredibly rare. I've camped two on blue. One took me about six to eight hours. Another took me two hours. And then I had a bard pal who got his in 30 minutes. From what I've seen here, the ring used to go for about 10k. I've seen the last few sell for five to 8k. What you get, what you get is going to be based on supply demand at the time. While writing this thread, I see one going for 7k for last few hours with no bites. I suggest this for a pet class, melee class, due to the super fast respawn. You can just smack it away and not be dependent on having to nuke it down. Um, I've seen people AoE the area, trying to keep down multiple spawn points. Anyway, uh, the Sarnak Courier is a good camp, supposedly, for plat. Um, it's level 14, so yeah. Get you a Goblin Gazugi ring and sell that bad boy to somebody in the tunnel, is what they're saying, I guess. 25-ish, I think it's a little bit too high for us, so I think I'm going to end it there. But yeah, Sarnak Courier is another one you could do. So we had the Sarnak Courier in Lake of Ill Omen. We had a Frogluck Gas Squire uh, in Guck, which was also on the per-level hunting guide. We had Paniel, which was kind of a new one. The Guards in Paniel. That's a pretty good one. Um... And then we had all the other stuff that I read to you earlier. The treasure hunting guide. Which was mostly... Oh, I forgot to do the other one. The other one. Here we go. Here we go. Sorry. If you clicked off, sorry. All right. Commodity items to be sold to players. Ah, uh, there's not... Sh shark skin. A root and harbor. Part of Leatherfoot Raider's quest. So you could uh, stack up some shark skin. It says you have to be level 15. That's not too bad. Um, then we have... I'm trying to look for stuff that's mainly like 20 to 24. So we can do more videos on this. Um, high pass hold if you're level 23 plus. Near Kithikor zone line. Vopuk Sherlock. Shiny brass idol. So he drops the shiny brass idol. In Kithikor, Vopak is around level 15, a warrior, and does not drop his idol. In High Pass, he is a much more formidable shaman who always drops his idol. So it's a shiny brass idol in High Pass. And um, he always drops it, and it's worth 500 plat right now. It has Divine Aura as a cast. So there's another one for you. Like I might even I might rewatch this video and find something for myself. Um We got uh There's a couple for level 18. Let's do those. Uh Upper Guck, once again the Squire. Um keeps talking about the Rune Bone Fork. Let's see how much it sells for. Uh like 150 plat. I mean, if you're getting experience too, I guess it is a lore item, though, so you can only get one of them. I don't know if I would call that one super awesome. Upper Guck. All right, Kern's Tower, the basement, and Undead Jester. Ixar Berserker Club. Do not mess up Bernier faction, and the basement is a safe camp. Plenty to pull for EXP while farming. Club is rare, but worth a few hundred gold plus bone chips. Ixar Berserker Club. Yeah, it's worth like 200. So, you know, they're talking about level 20 camps. We're not going to get like a thousand for something that drops. You're going to get a couple hundred, which is pretty good for that level. You know what I mean? So I I get it. Um, And yeah, I think that's about all I got for you. I tried to give you as much as I could for around that level range. More like a 18 to 24, but 20 to 24-ish range. I tried to give you as much as I could for that. But yeah, we were having real trouble in here. I was trying. I was trying to make get a pet, have it fight another one. I was trying to pull him back to the zone. There was a red gargoyle there. There was just yellows and whites all over the place. Um, this guy was asking me why I know him. He's kind of being kind of strange, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this one. That was your per-level uh, plat guide, a uh, treasure hunting guide for levels you know 20 to 24 18 to 24 i hope you found something i hope you make a lot of plat 
Let me know in the comments if you have any other ones. I know it's like a hard thing for EverQuest. People don't want to give up their camps. But if you're not playing anymore, like what's the harm of telling some people about your super secret camp where you made tons of plat or tons of experience? Like, come on, man. If you're, if you're already way past that, you're level 60, level 50, and it was a level 25 or 20 camp, like how long is it going to be before you come back to it and... Are we really going to be there when you come back to it? Like, give up, give up the ghost. Give up the, give it up. Snitch on it. Give us, give us the, give it to us, man. We want those plat camps, those EXP camps that you're still holding secretly, you know, in your brain. Put them in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe. Consider joining. It helps a lot to hear. Get about channel comp below. Sorry this video was kind of like, I didn't have a lot of time to play. And when I did have time to play, this is what happened on the screen. So I apologize, it's not anything like crazy good and new, but I tried, and uh, this is what happened. So yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.